The 1960s shook the country to its very core from an explosion in arts, literature, film, and music. A vast awakening had begun. There was a revolution of civil rights, anti-war protests, anti-establishment sentiment, and the birth of the counterculture. Then the 70s came in riding this wave of change and the influence remained strong, not just throughout the world and American cities, but continued to have a stronghold in the suburbs of middle-class America. And Catonsville was at the very forefront. The Catonsville. Well, it began in the 60s. It began with the cultural revolution that was going on in, uh, you know, the world we know about, the United States, America, England, but it was more than that. It was the whole, I mean, it was all of Europe and everything. But what it was, Catonsville 9 was a collection of pacifist, uh, religious people, Catholics, uh, brothers, nuns, and some, you know, some rabble rousers, and they broke into what's now the Knights of Columbus, and they got a bunch of draft cards, and they burned them. One guy, he's one of the main, who was always an agitator, and he was a thorn to the side of uh, Herbert Hoover, the guy, the head of the FBI, and what he would do, he was on the run forever. After, uh, after they burned all the draft cards down there in Mill Kingsville, Kingsville 9, I mean, there's plays about them, there's books. But I say, oh man, he's going to come and deliver a sermon at St. Mark's School. And it would be, or St. Mark's Parish, it would be under the radar. So what would happen is he would show up out of the blue, hiding from hiding, during these masses, give a, you know, give an anti war sermon, like a fire and brimstone kind of thing, as a Catholic. But he's all about, you know, what are these, these righteous, righteous anger, anger and indignation. And then, uh, you know, he'd give his big speech, get everybody riled up, and it disappeared. <laughs> and so then the FBI would show up, and the, the defense and the G better showing up, they're looking for us. Everybody's like, yeah, I don't know where he went. <laughs> and he would do it, and he would, he would keep doing just popping up on the blue and becoming, you know, famous for it. After a while, he was like, you know, he was he was a star of uh, the anti-war underground. Catonsville is a city located at the west side of Baltimore. Native tribes, known as the Piscataue, were thought to be the original settlers of this land around the Potomac and Patapsco River, just west of the Chesapeake Bay. Catonsville is located in Maryland, a state which gives you the experience of the big cities, the country, the mountains, rivers and lakes the Chesapeake, and the beaches, as well as the magnificent changes of the Four Seasons. Burning hot summers with the resemblance of the Deep South leaves you drenched in the humidity and is ideal for a dip in the bay. And winters that add in just enough snow and at times launch in the occasional blizzard to give that sense of living up north. These seasons with occasional extremes were coupled with temperate climates of the spring and fall and picturesque landscapes. Modern day Catonsville was settled in the 18th century. A road named Frederick Turnpike was built and opened by the Ellicott family as a route used to go from Ellicott Mills to Baltimore in the early 19th century. Richard Caton, under the authority of his father-in-law Charles Carroll, who was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, then settled along this route. As travelers conducted business along Frederick Turnpike, later named Frederick Road, the area started to grow. Wealthy residents of Baltimore City began to build large Victorian and colonial homes as summer residences to escape the hot Baltimore City heat. Soon families began to reside in Catonsville year-round with the rise of the automobile and a new trolley line. According to the Census Bureau, by the 1970s, Catonsville's population grew to over 54,000. I was born in January 1971. Italian Catholics on my father's side and Irish Catholics on my mother's side, which was a very large family. My mother having four siblings and generations of aunts, uncles, countless cousins, great aunts, great uncles, grandparents and great grandparents. It was this side of the family that opened my world to music, as well as four of my first cousins who are part of this ongoing story. Day trips, ball games at Memorial Stadium, long car rides with my aunts over the rolling hills, cookouts, family reunions, vacations down in Ocean City, all had one thing in common. There was always music playing. 